to talk about sex. And the most important question we're going to start with is, what makes a woman sexy? Mm, mm, mm. What makes a woman sexy? Are you asking me as Dan, the married man, or as the marriage counselor? Take it away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what? Let me just say this. What makes a woman sexy is every single thing my wife is. Akelo is the definition of sexy. But as a, as, as a man, let me just say this. Let me just say this. Some, there's some men who grow up thinking they're the boobs, they're the, the boobs guy, and they end up getting married, and ooh, they realize they're the butt guy. Or they, you know, they grow up thinking that they're bad guy, and then they end up being the boobs guy. But it's not even about the physical. That's where we get it wrong. Yes, uh, a woman's physical, uh, you know, what figure and what can make head stand, but that's not it. The thing that makes a woman sexy, number one, is attitude. Men get attracted to a woman's attitude. And that's why a man can get, a, get married to somebody who we consider as the epitome of sexiness. But then... Just, just doesn't feel attracted to her uh, some years down the line. Why? Because her attitude has changed. But a confident attitude, an attitude of loving, an, an attitude that is actually playful, an attitude that is, has that faithful um, level of naughtiness, now that is what makes a woman sexy. Mm. Interesting. Mm, mm, Interesting. Mm, mm. So when we were growing up, sex was very taboo. Mm. It was something we never talk about, we never even think about engaging. Mm. And then now you find yourself in a relationship and it is something that's now acceptable, even in marriage. Mm. So how do you transition from that? Wow, you know, sex is one of the most powerful thing in this world. Sex is so powerful that if you use it well, the blessings and the joy and the fulfillment and the excitement and pleasures, mm, good. But then abuse it and misuse it, you're going to be hurt. If I look at the society today, a lot of us are walking heartbroken pretty much because of sex. Mm. Because they were misused or uh, they misused when it comes to sex or they abused sex. Mm. So that is why um, I think sex has become such a taboo because when something is that powerful, some of us just don't know how to handle it. Mm. You know, we've, we've, some of us have actually equated sex to evil. And yet sex is a beautiful thing. It's mm. a beautiful thing. And what we just need to do is just do it well. So these taboos, I would actually um, just uh, advise people, come on. Talk about sex. Be open about it. Be open about it, and especially with the person that you're in love with, talk about it. Get to know each other, uh, each other's sexual uh, preferences, each other's sexual perspective. In fact, for me, when I say before you actually start dating somebody, get to find out what they think about sex. That means being open about it, being transparent about it. You uh, telling each other, okay, this is what I think. This is what I, I am for. This is what I'm against. And that way, you will not end up having surprises down the line. I'm sure you get a lot of questions about boundaries in sex, mm. in, re in terms of one partner wants to do something and the other does not. How do you advise such couples? Mm. Well, when I cancel couples, I think uh, perhaps number one is positions. Mm. Some couples actually think like, okay, the doggy is satanic. Mm. Uh, the only thing that we're supposed to do is missionary, especially this is from Christian people. Mm. You know, some even do not even talk about the clitoris, do not even talk about any particular thing. Mm. I did I have this uh, particular uh, test which I normally do with couples. It's called Sex Quiz for Husbands and Sex mm. Quiz for, for Wives, mm. which is pretty much it's a, a list of 21 questions you're supposed to ask yourself as a husband and also as a wife about your spouse sexually, sexually. And then after you finish answering those questions, now you uh, touch base with your spouse and see how right you are. And you'd be shocked. Sometimes some people don't even know their spouse's sexual preferences. And so a lot of one of the things that actually comes about is that some, some people are so rigid when it comes to matters of sex. Mm -hmm. Here, we, I cannot do this. You know, uh, granted, some people do not want anal sex at all. Some people do not want to lick. They say the tongue is only to taste food, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Do not dare touch anything else with that. Some people even making out is, mm -mm. some people just think when you're making love, it has to be in darkness. I don't want to see. Mm. I don't want to see. I just want to feel. You know, so, so some, uh, some, of, some of those things are like that. And you know, even when it comes to when to make, uh, to make love, some people say when a woman is having her periods, no, no. Mm. 
I like to think that it's a couple's thing. Mm -hmm. You know, this is why I say you as a couple come to that sexual agreement and don't be rigid. You know, uh, the, the thing about our bodies is that they are there to be explored. Allow your spouse, allow your partner to explore it. Sometimes you may actually realize, oh, I didn't know I like to be licked. Oh, I didn't know I like to be rubbed. Oh, I didn't know I like this particular mm -hmm. thing. But you wouldn't get to know that if you are rigid. So I say this, you're created. Uh, to find pleasure, you especially now want you to have uh, locked in, in 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 love. You're there. You're a couple. Enjoy each other. Get to find out each other. Yes. Now that's for people who had sex. Yes. What happens in the case where they this person this person has not had sex mm. and now they get into a marriage or they get into a relationship and that's one of the things that is accepted? Mm. How do they transition into that? Mm. When I'm advising, especially the single people, one thing that I usually tell them is, you know what, do not bring sex into the relationship when you get to know somebody quite easily, quite mm -hmm. early, because that way you know who's a joker and who's not. As I said earlier, sex has been greatly abused and misused. Mm -hmm. And now because of that, and especially now that we preach a lot of celibacy, and so people have actually decided, you know what, I'm going to hold. You read even books like the one for uh, Steve Harvey, which gives you 100 days, and one, some people extend it up until marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, So we're not going to have sex up until we get married. And then the thing is that once you get married, you realize, oh my goodness, you've been shut You've shut down, the, shut down the conversation of sex before marriage, and then once you get married, now, yeah, now we need to bring it. You would expect her to be the sexiest wife, the sexiest husband. Bring your A game on in bed. And so some people uh, get uh, to be in this shock. They don't even know what to do. And so which is why I say, in as, if you're going to choose not to have sex before marriage, still talk about sex. Mm -hmm. Don't look at it as is this scary monster. Sex is not evil. Talk about it. You know, get to know things. Get to read stuff. You know, we have, as you say, you know, if women, they need to check out your website and then they, they get to learn a few things over there. There are so many wonderful articles and videos over there about, about sex. Get to learn. Information will not hurt you. You've had it. Deliberately water your love garden. Find out more at www.evwoman.co.ke and if you have a question for Dayan, um, You may write to me, uh, Dayan Masinde, on Facebook. May even also request a sex quiz for husbands and sex quiz for wives. You'll enjoy it. Thank you.